Okay, so you've most likely already chosen a dress code for your wedding, but deciding what to wear for that dress code and getting it right is probably why you're here. So what we're gonna do now is to walk you through eight of the most common wedding dress codes, and I'll explain what each dress code means, as well as what is appropriate to wear for that dress code. Two things I wanna mention before we jump into this video, however, number one, that this is not a definitive list, and number two, that it does not cover all the options and possibilities within each dress code. All I wanna do here with this first video is to give you a broad overview to get you in the ballpark, and then as we go through the rest of the course, you will gain all the knowledge you need to really dial in exactly what you're looking for so that you can look and feel your best. Dress code number one is black tie. Black tie is a very common wedding dress code and one of the most formal and prescriptive. Unlike many of the other dress codes we'll talk about, with black tie, there's not much room to do anything beyond what the rules say. So basic outfit checklist for black tie, a black tuxedo, white tuxedo shirt, stud set, cufflinks, a cummerbund or vest, black bow tie, white pocket square, and black patent leather shoes. If there seems like there's not too much room for creativity here, black tie is kind of designed to be that way. However, there are definitely ways that you can add personal touches, which I'll cover in depth in a video later on in the course. Dress code number two is black tie optional, sometimes referred to as formal. Now, the thing to know about black tie optional is that the optional part of black tie optional doesn't really apply. Black tie optional still basically means to wear a tuxedo, and this particular dress code, I would say, is really designed more for wedding guests who might not have a tuxedo to wear to your wedding, because chances are that if you're saying the dress code is black tie optional, that you're going to be wearing a tuxedo. Now, in terms of your tuxedo, black tie optional does give you the option to play around with color a little bit, so instead of a classic black tux, you may opt for a midnight blue tuxedo, and then the checklist remains the same as black tie, white tuxedo shirt, stud set, cufflinks, a cummerbund or vest, black bow tie, white pocket square, and black patent leather shoes. Dress code number three is creative black tie. Creative black tie is another type of formal dress code, however, not nearly as prescriptive in terms of the rules you have to follow as black tie or black tie optional. Think of creative black tie as formality minus the rigor and stuffiness. Unlike black tie and black tie optional, where you really don't have a lot of room to go outside traditional boundaries, with creative black tie, adding some personality and flair is not only recommended, but often encouraged. Now, what does all this mean in terms of what to wear? Creative black tie is the perfect dress code for a dinner jacket. And the dinner jacket you choose depends on the overall vibe of your wedding and your own personal style. For something very classic and sophisticated, an off-white or cream-colored dinner jacket is a great option. For something modern and elegant, you might choose a burgundy dinner jacket. And then if you wanna get really creative, you know, the sky's the limit, you could go with velvet or something patterned. Checklist now for creative black tie. In addition to your dinner jacket, you'll need tuxedo pants, a tuxedo shirt, bow tie, cufflinks, pocket square, and either a patent leather shoe or velvet slipper. Dress code number four is cocktail attire slash semi-formal. Cocktail attire is a great balance between elegance and comfort. It's not as formal as any of the black tie dress codes we've talked about, but it is still very stylish and sophisticated. Typically, the cocktail attire dress code is going to be for an evening event, so as far as your checklist is concerned, we're talking dark suit, solid color shirt, necktie, pocket square, and black, brown, or oxblood leather shoes. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what color suit should I wear, and how do I choose the correct shirt? What's the right pocket square and tie combination? And how do I match my shoes to my suit? All of that will be covered in detail in section three of the course, which deals specifically with wedding suit style. All you need to know now at this point is that cocktail attire equals suit. Dress code number five is dressy casual, which I know kind of sounds like an oxymoron, and we're also going to throw in casual to this mix and dress code as well. I would approach any type of casual wedding dress code as more of a business casual vibe. Casual as a wedding dress code does not mean t-shirt and sneakers. When I think of business casual, I think put together but relaxed at the same time. So at the bare minimum, we're talking a sport coat, dress shirt, nice dress pants or chinos, 
lace-up shoes or loafers, pocket square, and the tie being optional. Dress code number six is tropical slash beach. Now, if you're getting married in a warm environment like this and in this type of setting, there are two big things to pay attention to when choosing your wedding attire. Number one is to be sure to choose lighter colors. We're talking tan, khaki, white, cream, or royal blue. And then number two is to understand the importance of fabric choice. If it's gonna be hot, you want a fabric that is light and breathable, such as linen, cotton, seersucker, or fresco. For the tropical or beach wedding, you could go either way in terms of tuxedo or suit. However, I would suggest that if it's a daytime event, you go with a suit, tie is optional. And then if it's an evening event, a tuxedo in the right fabric is also appropriate. Dress code number seven is rustic. Popular for backyard weddings, outdoor weddings, and themed weddings, you can actually go one of two ways with a rustic dress code. Rustic does sort of imply a more casual approach as well as one with a little more of a rugged feel. So like the tropical beach dress code, you really kind of want to dress to match your environment. I wouldn't normally recommend it for a wedding, but for a casual rustic wedding, a blazer with a dress shirt, dark denim, and boots, might be a nice choice. The other way you could go with a rustic wedding is to dress up more like a suit, for example, but really play into the rustic vibes with your fabric choice. If it's a cooler night in the fall, a tweed suit or a flannel suit or a Harris tweed sport coat with flannel pants could be a really nice complement to an environment like that. So in this dress code overview, we've pretty much been going from formal to casual. However, there is one more dress code to cover, which is the most formal, and that is dress code number eight, white tie. Not a dress code you see very often, definitely not a popular wedding dress code, but I wanted to include it mostly to clear up any confusion there might be. White tie does not simply mean wearing a white bow tie with your tuxedo. For a proper white tie outfit, there are three very specific things you need to have in addition to the white tie. Number one is a tail coat. As you can see, very different from a regular tuxedo jacket. Number two is a wing collar formal shirt. And number three is a special white waistcoat. Again, probably not a dress code you're considering, but important to understand what makes it distinct. So there you have it, a quick look at eight wedding dress codes. That gives you a good overview of everything from the formality of each dress code and answers the question of whether to wear a suit or a tuxedo. And also now you have a checklist of things you need and that we can now start thinking about more in detail as we move through the course. Welcome to the Groom Guide once again, and if you have any questions, let me know.